Speeding. It's a violation. You can make them fly or jump or crash your wall. Superhero action figures over seven inches tall. Each sold separately. Superman, Batman, Incredible Hulk. You can make them do their joke. thing. You can make <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> slide down a string. Lots of action for one and all. Action figures over seven inches tall. These superhero action figures each sold separately. Batman, Superman, Incredible Hulk, and Spider-Man each sold separately by Mego. Hello, this is Joe Franz for the Novak and Franz Show. I'm here with uh, this guy over here. What's his name? Hey now, Mr. Brandon Novak, live in the present person? Yeah. <laughs> Something? Yeah, live in the first person. Uh, we're here in my uh, five-story underground nuclear holocaust fortified bunker. So uh, just in case the big one happens, this is where we're all going to end up, boys. I got food. Uh, water and some beer for us guys. Uh, you can't have any Novak. And of course, we have Taylor Cooper here. Hi, everybody. Who's the president of the Might Be News Network. Yes, sir. I thought you were going to wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry for all the people on YouTube. My bald head is glaring in the, uh, the lights. Yeah. And of course, we have uh, CJ Schumard, who is the president of the Brandon Novak fan club and the CEO of all <laughs> business affairs for Brandon Novak Incorporated. There that it pretty is. much sums it that up. That never ceases to fucking <laughs> knock me off my feet, that title. It really doesn't. So, this is our first video show, and uh, it's been like eight months since, since we've done a show. So, uh, what have you been up to? Who, me? Yeah, you. Uh, I can speak for what I've done the last, let's do week, because I forget time just kind of merges together. Uh, I uh, just got off a plane from Florida. Um, two days prior to flying into Florida, I was summoned to uh, uh, a, a fellow friend, work colleague who's a, a psychiatrist, psychologist in, in Yardley, PA, and he had a client, and, and they wanted me to come do an intervention. So I did an intervention on said client. Client agreed to go, and then the family hired me as a sober companion to fly him to treatment, um, and by no means was that an easy task. He was so, so high. I have a picture. Well, we can't show the picture. I'm not going to show the picture <laughs> to the public, for Christ's sakes, Franz, but this is what was in my living room. Whoa. Um, as oh, I, my God. Oh, man. I'm looking at a guy hunched over. He looks like he, It looks like a human being that's folded in half. That's called fentanyl. That's, it's like a whole day. Like, remember when I used to do heroin and you would see me on heroin? Yeah. You didn't see me like that too often, did you? No, like, not that bad. Yeah, I usually we're laid out on the floor. Yeah, this is like literally night of the living dead kind wow. of stuff where they, they look like they're going to fall, but they don't. But they won't sit down and they bend and they, it's very weird. Um, in between that and, 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 and walking around the house, picking up bags of heroin that he continued to drop... Uh, while making sure the Narcan was present, because I thought he was probably going to overdose at any given second, uh, at the same time, like, administering his medications that he was prescribed. Jesus Christ. Uh, so I had to pray to God that we would get through security to the airport. Yeah. Uh, we make it through security. Uh, TSA pulled him for sideline searches, sideline searches, and, and then I would have to explain, I have to give him my business card and say, you know, I, I'm escorting him to treatment. And it was so funny how their demeanor would completely change. Like, what's in the bag? And they're going through it, and they're looking at each little thing they pull out, and they're looking at him and looking at me. Yeah. And then I'm like, look, I'm escorting him to treatment. Here's my card. And then like, oh, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Total. We're sorry we treated you like a piece of shit five seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then we get through there, and and that's usually the hardest time uh, in the journey when um when we get to the airport. Yeah. Because now the reality sets in all like a floodgate. Oh my God! I'm about to board a flight. I'm about to go to a different state to go to a rehab. My jig is really up. Yeah, here, yeah. You know, so that's when like terror consumes them and addiction all at once, and they become almost like a demonic plague. And they just, should I go? Should I not? And this is the word. All of their defenses kicking at once. At once, bam, bam, bam. And this is what the bitch was. Is all of a sudden the flight got delayed three hours. Oh no. Yeah. So, well, did you take him to the bar and just yeah, calm him down with some drinks? Well, he was so intoxicated and so inebriated on on all the, the drugs he was on. That yeah. Luckily, he didn't even realize. But I'm praying to God that he doesn't realize because if he does, he'll probably run out of the airport. Yeah. So then I finally it happens. I, I convince him to get on the plane and we go. And uh, 
and, and I was in Florida for two days. But honestly, I had such a a, a a mental hangover, emotional hangover, because I like absorbed all of his spirits and all of his like, you know, just really negative, toxic. Oh vibes. yeah, yeah. That it was just like ah. Yeah, you get that when when you're consumed with negativity for so long. Yeah, it's just like how am I going to escape this this uh, Gordian knot of of negative vibes? And I hate the word vibes, but it's like there's no it's other so way real. to describe it. So yeah. I purposely delayed coming back to stay in Florida extra day because the woman who cleans my house couldn't come yesterday. So she's cleaning it now as we speak. And she couldn't go, come? No. no. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Well, I don't know. I'm, See, just... I'm trying to tell a serious story here, and you want to fucking pollute it with sex talk. Yeah, right. You would have taken that joke I know. if you could. I know. Uh, <laughs> no, but, no, just, things, things are bad when you make me feel like a degenerate. <laughs> so, Jesus. so when I go home, I'll sage my place. Uh, you yeah. know, cats are okay. You should have saw the cats. My cats just stared. And I'm like, you boys fucking better be really grateful because that could be me. Could have been you. Yeah, could yeah. have been. And could be, again, provided one bad decision. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, he's there. I'm here. I come back today directly to do this. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, and then you leave again tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning but, to but Barcelona, you have, Spain. And you have a bunch of stuff to do tonight after this, a bunch of video stuff. Yeah, because we're making a documentary about this whole trip uh, of, of my, like, comebacks. Not comeback, but just kind of to God willing remain relevant in the skateboarding world. I'm going to film, like, a full skate part in its entirety. For who? Wow. Can um, you talk about it? Uh, th yeah, uh, Johnny Schilleroff's new company. Um, of Element. They, yeah, but it's not Element. They just released a big thing on the barracks, which is like a, a big deal in the skateboarding world, and, and I had a, a, a guest appearance in there skating. Yeah. Um, and so did Bam. Um, Bam still skates? We, he, <laughs> he, he actually landed a it's yeah. really right. No, he's been hurt forever, man. His Every time I talk to him, he's been complaining about his hamstring. For for nine months, every time I talk to him, he's like, my hamstring's still fucked up. It's yeah. He's like, like, will you ever heal? So the company's called The Heart Supply. Yeah. Uh, and the video that was just released that was on the barracks and it's kind of going all over the internet is uh, by Johnny's son, Cam, mm -hmm. who was best friends with Gigi. Gigi is Kobe Bryant's daughter who died in the plane crash. Yeah. So it was a tribute to Gigi, which they released on Valentine's Day. And they edited that up fast. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh, crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean. So that's what I've been up to yeah. in the, the last four days. Wow. All right, well, uh, I'll forego asking you about the additional seven months and three weeks. Um, <laughs> what have you been up to? I was uh, Let up. me be nice and return the favor. Uh, Although I don't give a shit about what you've been up to. There's a first for everything. I'm an alcoholic. I'm selfish. I'm self-centered. I could care less about you. It's all me. I know. <laughs> well, no, I was digging up uh, dinosaurs. You I was, brought me I one was back. On, I was on a dinosaur dig. You, you know? brought me one back. I, I, dude, I dug up, I dug up triceratops, sauropods. Um, uh, I, I just, uh, I, I, pr I probably dug. 10 different species out of the ground with my own two hands. I mean, I wasn't the main digger. I was just documenting. I can't really talk about the whole project in its entirety, in its entirety yet. But um, You're such they, a South they Philly actually one of badass. Me, my own two hands. Why do you have to get specific on how you dug it out of the ground, because, tough guy? Because when you touch Fuck. an animal that's 65 million years old, and yeah, you, a you hold a piece of that animal in your hand, and it, it, it makes you realize, it's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm holding a piece of a, 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 a 30 foot dinosaur that lived only on plants that was spending Man, its life healthy as shit running from a tyrannosaurus rex that needed 220 pounds of meat every day just to survive and you think about that just generation after generation and millions and millions of years of this taking place this this cycle of life it really makes you put everything into fucking perspective man yeah so really right sizes you that's why i say with my own two hands it's so special when you hold a piece of dinosaur yeah i say digging with my own yeah, two hands with, sure, get that, uh, get that right there over there on that shelf there. I, I get that you Taylor, held it in your own two hands you. but you don't gotta say i dug it up with my two hands so oh yeah well taylor i'm giving this to you this is a piece oh, wow. of triceratops you. i used to frill. feel so special when you gave me one <laughs> now you're just giving it away like fucking candy on halloween that. cocksucker so when you that. when you feel it's like it's not even special <laughs> don't worry we all have one <laughs> probably bought it in the gift shop oh wow sake. oh my god i can't yeah. believe this you yeah, suppose i actually never dug yeah. a dinosaur and i just I'm starting to feel that way <laughs> you're handing them out like candy wow. this is i'm spreading the love oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. This is incredible. Uh, whenever Thank you, you feel much. stress, you hold that in I your hand. The stress will, will melt away. <laughs> or he has. <laughs> what else? You to give more away? You got more down there? Speaking of stress, I got, since this is now a video show, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to show something. Okay, so it's, it's the 1970s, and not now, but it used to be yeah. when I was a kid. And so you would need these games for for children's parties. You remember the little uh, the little pools that you buy, the plastic pools that yeah, you fill one, them up yep. and all the kids, you know? Well, they had a game back then called Lawn Darts. Mm -hmm. And it came in a package that looked like this. Now, Lawn Darts was a game that was played by every kid in every neighborhood throughout mm -hmm. suburbia, right? Right. And I'm going to give you a lawn dart right here. I want you to hold this. It's about what? As big as Just your forearm? Dig this up with your bare hands, too. <laughs> 65 million years old, too. No, that's 40. <laughs> now, uh, did you ever play lawn darts? Uh, I, I remember them. I, yeah, I, but I don't think I played them correctly. I just did like this. That's what everyone did. And that's why in like four-year period, there was 6,000 injuries in America <laughs> and two deaths. And basically, <clears throat> the point of this game is I don't know if you can see this here, but um, so you're, they give you like two hula hoops with this game and two dart or uh, two sets of darts the size of your wrists. And the idea is to stand next to your hula hoop and throw the dart into the opponent's hula hoop. Only the thing is you're standing next to your hula hoop. So you have children and drunk adults throwing <laughs> these at each other what could happen what what possible could you like evolution I just, see yeah yeah oh, this thing is solid yeah no this is definitely solid That's like, like two this pounds is, this is hurting you if it hits you at any speed basically they used to make them with sharp points too oh i oh, it, especially with sharp points it's over for you yeah <laughs> like this is weighted like if it Right in your face. I know, I know. Oh, this is bad news. Well, the one kid had hit in the eye, so he was he was like a paraplegic, and then it killed the other girl. Oh I don't know. God. And that's when they put a stop to it? Yeah, so eventually they stopped this, the sale of lawn darts. So um, if you ever pick a, if you ever pick up lawn darts at a, uh, at a yard sale, uh, the moral of the story is don't use them. But you can sell them on eBay for a lot of money. <laughs> hey, it looks like we, What's have that a, we have a caller here. I don't know. In the package? We haven't been on the air for eight months, and we've been on the show for three minutes, and you already want to take calls? Don't we have so much shit to go over? No, well, yeah, but, yeah, but we, they we don't want to promised... fucking hear about other people. CJ, you're on my cord, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we got so many fucking cords here. It looks like the Indiana Jones snake pit scene. Uh, hello, caller. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> well, CJ dropped the here first call. Yeah, he's on there. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Get your you together, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, what's on your mind? Hey, man, I, I just wanted to call you guys. Uh, I, I, I saw you guys on Facebook. You're doing like a, uh, you're doing your, your live or whatever. So I wanted to kind of reach out and ask you guys some questions. If that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, and first and foremost, I just want to say how much your show just like reminds me of Radio Bam, dude. And it like it gives me that like nostalgia that I love about it. Um, Thank you. First, I, I kind of want—I kind of wanted to ask you, Streets of Baltimore. When is it coming out? <laughs> Very uh, fitting question, I believe. The Streets of Baltimore is the <laughs> sure, dude, it I... looks could kill right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's that's it's it's the long-awaited uh, sequel to Dream Seller. Um, this chronicles Brandon's uh, life on the streets of Baltimore, his and uh, his. The debauchery that that uh, that he lived in and created for himself, and uh, his rise to fame of Viva La Bam, uh, on which he got addicted to cocaine, and so there's. If you think that Dream Seller was a crazy book, I think this is way better than Dream Seller. It has a lot of action, um, heroin polluted romance. Um, you know, it's it's in many parts a crime drama. I mean, it's 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 just an insane book, and also. In the book, we have your original rest records that yeah. we went to Baltimore to, to dig up. It was crazy. So every time it gets arrested, you not only get to see over 50 pages of full-color photos, but you also get to actually read the actual police accounts of, of each arrest and rehab. So it's uh, it was amazing. So right now, um, I, I guess I guess we should say it, man. We just yeah. got, we just got it reviewed by Steve O of Jackass, and fuck yeah, yeah, and Doctor Drew. 
uh, Doc, Dr. Drew gave us a beautiful review, and we're, we're working on a couple other reviews before it gets released. So the book is finished. The yep. book is absolutely finished, 100% complete. Uh, I have a copy of it in my truck as we speak. Uh, like, no bullshit. It is done. We are waiting on, you know, maybe two, at most three more reviews. Um, and then, it, you know, we'll be putting it out. So with that being said, I, I hate giving a rough time uh but what would you say a rough timeline will be of when i don't know i'm just wondering why this guy's breathing so hard what are you doing <laughs> what's going on i'm over walking there? around my I'm, I'm i'm running laps in my kitchen <laughs> that's cool oh okay you know what they call that uh they call that um when someone does that they're a parapedetic that's someone who walks and communicates and thinks all at once or a fucking multitasker i got, I got a Stop getting all nerdy and shit <laughs> The book is coming out yeah. within around when I'd say, dude, I can't wait. Roughly, yeah, we can't six wait months. either. No, before the end shorter of the year. than that, three months shorter than that. I'd like to say three months. All right, yeah. so I'd say about three months. So yeah. keep keep an eye out. Again, the book is finished. Big I can't time. stress that enough. The book is finished. Just hang yeah, in there you. a little okay, bit longer. I got, I got another question for you. I got a couple more questions for you guys. Okay, go. Uh, J- Jackass Four. Are you guys involved in that at all? We can't. No? We're not allowed to say it at this point. We, we're not allowed to say anything. We're sworn to secrecy. Okay. One more quick question for you guys. Okay. And this one's for Joe specifically. Um, the Don Vito tooth, uh, the Lamborghini tooth pull, is it safe to say that footage is gone forever? Um, yes. Uh, the, 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 footage, the footage will probably never be seen. We'll never probably see the light of day. I, I own the tooth from the – so. Yeah. So yeah, I know. So, so so you know. So when we did uh, what was it, Jackass Two? Um, Don Vito had a big part in it. The, the the whole signature stunt of the whole movie was uh, Don Vito got his tooth pulled by a string that was attached to the bumper of Bam's Lamborghini, driven by Bam and Johnny Knoxville. And uh, of course, uh, Don Vito got wrongfully accused of uh, some legal indiscretions, which he did not do. And yep. um, so I don't want to talk about that because it really pisses me off. But um, anyway, so, right. yes, yeah, so uh, Paramount took the footage and shelved it. But um, Don Vito gave me the tooth. You know that tooth pull stunt was uh, – I was originally supposed to do that? No. Yeah. Why didn't I you? was slated to do it. But that's when I did doo-doo falls uh, and, and, and broke all my ribs and they had to take me to the hospital, mm. which is where then the police were there waiting to detain me for the prescription fraud. So I went directly from there to jail – which is why I, you know, oh. do the tooth pull. Well, yeah. Fun There's fact. always Jackass 4, no there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe you can make up for it in the new Jackass. <laughs> Read about it in the streets of Baltimore. It's all in there. <laughs> Buy 50 copies Dude, personally. All right, well, thanks so much for your call, brother. Fuck yeah, pleasure. Hey, thank you guys for taking me. All right, yeah, man. God bless you. Oh, man, the memories. So um, speaking of memories, Brandon, I got something I wanted you to hear. <laughs> what do you got? Well... I wanted to do this hot audio thing. Let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, so in the 1980s, there were there were a lot of fad diets going on. Working a lot of diet posture. pills. Yeah, yeah. It's, working it's a big posture. deal. There was a lot of uh, fad diets. And there was one very popular uh, diet plan that was, Jesus, you're intense right now. Is that how you meditate? I'm just kind of becoming one. Well... Anyway, you can become with one this with long, this drawn out story. There was somewhere. No, because you got fucking demonic stares scaring the I'm shit out of me. I was like, I've never seen him like man. this. I'm bored. Okay. Anyway, here's the commercial they were running. All right. The diet plan was called the AIDS diet plan. Yeah. It was spelled A Y D S. Okay. This, of course, was before 1982, before uh, we long discovered that era. there was. Yes. Yes. And this is before we discovered that there was AIDS. Mm-hmm. So, AIDS. The disease mm-hmm. and the AIDS diet plan came out at the same time. And this was their commercial. Multitasking. I've tried fad diets, powders, pills. Still, my weight's been up and down like a yo-yo. Until the AIDS plan taught me how to take off weight and help keep it off. AIDS may taste like a candy, but AIDS contains one of the most effective appetite suppressants you can buy. And there's no stimulant in AIDS that could make you nervous. With AIDS, I ate less, so the weight came off. To help keep it off when I sometimes want things loaded with calories, AIDS helps put me in control. Let the AIDS plan teach you how to take off weight and help keep it off. Try peanut butter AIDS. Jesus Christ. Now, can you imagine spending multi-million dollars into an ad campaign and then 
a, a terrible life threatening <laughs> epidemic disease yeah, right. comes out at the same time. And, um, yeah, uh, but those AIDS weren't peanut butter flavored. Yeah, that's true. But can you imagine, like, people are like, oh, you look so great. Like, how did you lose all that weight? AIDS. AIDS. All right, here's one more. The AIDS diet plan helped me get back into a size six. AIDS helps control your appetite so you lose weight. Yet AIDS lets you taste, chew, and enjoy. And the appetite suppressant in AIDS is not a stimulant. AIDS helped me lose the weight. It has nothing in it that could make me nervous. Question, why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight <laughs> safely and effectively. Use only as directed. So that's, that's that's the story of the AIDS diet plan. Oh my god! Yeah, we were talking about that for. I mean, that yeah. was a, that was a big time. <laughs> I mean, you kind of stuck between a rock and a hard spot with that topic. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause it's it's been so bad. I don't really know what to say about that. Well, did you know what, <laughs> when AIDS first started? Right, I remember right. there, there was a news report about it, and they were calling it. Uh, it was originally called the Gay Plague. Well, they, that's they, where they it was originated. A bathhouse yeah. in San Francisco was where the first case originated from. Is that true? Yeah, I didn't know that. A bathhouse in San Francisco was where the first case originated from. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think. How would you know that? I read it along the way. Uh, uh, yeah, look I, it up. Maybe Google it or something. Well, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of theories about how AIDS is a um, some kind of global apparatus, uh, you know, Illuminati way to keep our population down and all this. I, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm open minded to those uh. theories. Uh, I, I believe in things like that. Not that one specifically, but I don't discount that. There was a fella, I believe his name was Gallo. They have and he, he, he actually he actually claimed there was no, I think his name was Gallo. He claimed that there was no AIDS, that oh, there was no yeah. HIV. And he actually injected himself uh, with HIV. Um, he thought that it was, it was a condition of poor health. Um, and uh, and it's actually very interesting. So the different so there is no universal standard about AIDS. Um, it, what AIDS is to one country or region of the world, it's indicative only to that region. So in other words, I can go, for example, to Africa and take an AIDS test there, mm -hmm. and I could be HIV positive, right? Then I could go to Sweden, mm -hmm. take another HIV test, and they'll say, no, you're fine. You don't have HIV. So there is actually no universal standard, which if you look at the whole conspiracy theory about how they, it's used for population control, what really is going on with the epidemic in Africa? Do all these people really have HIV? Or is it, I don't know, Bill Gates does a lot of work down there, does a lot of tax write-off, in, in, injects a lot of those tribes, indigenous tribes, with a lot of experimental drugs. Hmm. So who knows? What the uh, hmm. what, what's really going on over there? Yeah, I don't discount that at all. Yeah, you know, I just watched that um, the 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 docu series, if you will, the four show docu series on Netflix called The Pharmacist, and it's this this one man, a father who, who whose son was lost tragically to uh, you know crack cocaine, uh, a nice affluent family, a nice uh, suburb in, in Louisiana. In the middle of the night, he went to the Fifth Ward and he went to by crack and, and and the dealer shot him as opposed to serve him and the father was trying to find out who the dealer was so he could properly have him prosecuted and, and in doing so the father's a pharmacist keep in mind but in doing so somehow he stumbled upon the first uh pill mill right the first documented pill mill um, what's a pill mill a pill mill is a a, a doctor who sets shop up and for uh, you come in with 300 dollars cash i'll write you five scripts i won't tell you know just it's turn and burn cash business. It's a croaker. Yes. Yeah. So this is the first documented case of it. And and this doctor, she was in in uh, Louisiana. Her 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 office wouldn't open till uh, eleven p.m. at night, and it would close at five a.m. So all through the night, and there would be people that would drive from states and states away, and would camp out in the parking lot. They some of them would have to wait for three days to be seen. That's how many people were in there. Just fucking. Choo -choo -choo. Um, and he stumbled upon that, and then he started to like want to have that shut down because he felt I couldn't save my kids' life, so maybe I can save other kids' lives if I can help put this to end. And then in doing that, 
He started. Well, how do you end it? Well, th- it, it, it's only a four show series, so I, I suggest you watch it. I, I, I'm not. I'm doing it a terrible injustice by trying to explain it. I'm not good with that. He's as you know, trying to. I saw it. He's trying to dance around giving you spoilers. Yes, to I see all the, so, the work yeah, this guy okay. did. Is this a documentary series or is this uh, is this acted? Is this no? Uh, it, he's got all the transcripts, all oh, the footage, okay. yeah, so recordings. This, this guy recorded okay. everything like with we the have. Yeah. I see. Really ingenious. Wow. Um, but then from that he stumbles into. Big Pharma and how much of a problem that is. Yeah. And at, at, he starts calling the DEA, the FBI, and, and they're like, leave us alone. Stay out of this. We're actively pursuing it. Yeah. He doesn't think that they are because he's witnessing the, the first documented pill mill case in Louisiana. But the point of the story is, at the end, he starts believing he's crazy. Right, he starts thinking that, 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 that people were after him, people are trying to, to kill him to shut this down. And what happens is, ultimately, he played a big hand in in in, in helping shut down uh, or, or Purdue. And so the, and he the feels lawsuits. gaslighted. He feels like maybe I'm imagining. And he starts all this. believing it. Maybe yeah, he, I'm in this whirlwind maybe, created in my I, head. This he's, fictional alternate um, counterfeit reality. Yeah, that and I've he's created. audio recording it at the time. So he's like, I pray to God that I'm wrong. And he's calling his wife saying, take care of so-and-so. If, if something happens to me, I hope I'm losing my mind, but I don't think I am. Yeah. He's in this weird, like, parallel mm. universe of, of one foot in, one foot out. And at the end, it, it all that proves to ring true. And he, it's all documented. So the reason why I bring that up is because you're going into these theories of, like, you know, Maybe it is a tax write off. Maybe it is, yeah. you know, human population control and, and all. I believe it. I, yeah. I don't know if it is or isn't, but I don't put anything past anybody these days. Well, dude, after Epstein gets gets uh, uh, commits suicide in jail after all the guards fall asleep and conveniently the cameras just happen to shut off at yeah. the same time, I don't put anything no. past anything. Dude. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, and in any way, what I love about conspiracy theories is you don't have to believe them to indulge in them. I mean, no. it's, it's 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 fun to think about these conspiracies, like your right. Alex Jones types. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy is fucking an entertainment genius. If nothing, if none of his theories are true, right? Like the know? Gary Webb stuff, uh, the crack cocaine, how they made, uh, how the Reagan administration basically made crack cocaine uh, through backdoor deals with uh, the Contras. Oh, yeah. And doing all that stuff. Oh. And Oliver North was involved and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, Gary Webb was found. He, he committed suicide by I didn't know, allegedly who, shooting himself Reb, in the head How twice. did Gary Webb fit into the Iran-Contra? He was the reporter that broke the story that that was all going down, uh-huh. that we were shipping guns to the Contras and they were shipping cocaine back to America. And then next thing you know, Freeway Ricky Ross uh, yeah. out in L.A. Yeah. Uh, has his hands oh, on uh, on the market. All the crack, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Mm. And then next thing you know, it destroys. Which I totally buy into all that. Yeah. It, it happened. It's documented. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. So they why laid, would they, this be crazy? They later, you know? they later came out and admitted to it. But for years and years, I mean, Gary Webb was blacklisted. Like nobody wanted anything to do with them because oh. at first they they were like, oh, this is kind of believable. We we want to look into this, and then it all just got shut down, shut down, shut down. Mm-hmm. And then he got blacklisted, and years and years and years later, you know, Oliver North is talking about it, and yeah, it yeah. Happened. I mean, it's all financially driven, you know. Yeah. How can the biggest players capitalize the most? Look at Purdue, right? They 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 they. They, they come under scrutiny because they've created this, like, epidemic uh, of addiction that's the number one human casualty. Yeah. So what's their next move? What did they try to do? They wanted to get into uh, drug and alcohol treatment. Yeah. You know, Purdue, they realized, okay, you take opioids, this is a fact, you become constipated. You don't shit for days, weeks, sometimes months, depending on how much you're consuming on a daily basis. So what they do, they came up with a uh, with a, a form of a laxative where you take this pill and now you shit. So they're literally covering it on both ends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I mean, it's just... And, and at the but same it's time... It's all, yeah, it's all money. it's all financially driven. Well, right. also at the same time, a couple other things happened. So uh, we began the American war on drugs, right? So right. now... now just say no. Now that they're right? illegal, there's just say no. There's mm-hmm. there's the uh, ad campaign. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. There was um, uh, b- uh, virtually every uh, huge pop star in America did an anti crack uh, a commercial. Even Pee Wee Herman yep. did one. Right. So it's coming out with a new movie. I hear. 
Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, he's trying a remake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wrote a script, yeah. a remake to Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but like yeah. it's oh, dark, like a darker, darker way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. He's like an alcoholic, I guess, in the movie, is what they say. Oh, wow. I'd be all about that. That's fucking I'd great. Be all about fucking that. Fucking right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm there. It's starting to create Well, buzz. his last one was great, too. What was it? Pee Wee's Big Vacation or whatever? Uh, that was yeah. so good. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen any. Oh, but anyway, so back to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. So that is what drove all the prices up. So now you had this tremendous influx of cocaine. So how did we drive. Demand up by using our tax dollars, you know, and also inadvertently the um, the Iran Contra was used to cheat Carter out of his chance for a, a, a second uh, administration right. because uh, you know that's why the the hostages were all released right after Reagan got his presidency. So it's. Uh, so with all that being said, how could you not believe in conspiracy? <laughs> I know theories, it's yeah, so right? fun, right. but it's so fun no, to even, agree. even yeah. if they're not true. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about flat Earth. Only kidding. <laughs> all right, we I got a caller. In here. Area Fifty One. I totally believe in that. Hello, caller. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Good, buddy. What up, man? I I see from Good your day. area code, you're a fellow Baltimore on. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Calling from uh, Ellicott City right now. Fuck yeah. Just got out of work. There we go. Hey, man. Um. Yeah, uh, Novak, I saw that you've been hanging out with Bam. How's he doing? Seems like he's okay? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's he's in a good place right now. Um, good. Shall I good say man. a better place than he was? Um, good, you know, good. Uh, and look, any, any step forward is a step in the right direction. Exactly. Man. I love to see that. Exactly. Franz, have you had any, have you had any contact with Bam at all? Yeah, we talk. We, we mainly text um, every now and then. Uh, if he's in a like a like a really dark place, uh, he usually gives me a call, and you know sometimes he's receptive to what I say, but not not generally. Generally, he just wants to talk and he wants to air out his feelings, um, you know. And um, I know when he's in a good mood because uh, he'll text me some old memories that we have from back in the day, and I you know I can picture him sitting around reminiscing. Um, I know that he is you know making a valiant effort for sobriety. I know he wants it, you know. There's always a question, yeah. though. It's, you know, does, does a person have the desire to seek the wisdom that they need to, uh, that, 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 that they need to gain to change, you know? So the whole thing is a process, and it never ends. Um, right, know. and I, I, think, I, think, I think Novak has said something around the lines of, like, uh, you know, and it's kind of cliche that, you know, they, they're not going to take the help unless they, they actually want to, unless it's their idea, unless they're ready for that help and they're ready for that change. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of just so. hopefully help create the, the narrative or, or structure. For, right, right. For when the question's just, asked, and, it'll be much easier. Right, and just kind of keep that, that positive environment, I think. Mm. There's a lot of facets um, about being ready for sobriety, though, that I've noticed, yeah. you know, with, with, with my friends really who are is. in all the programs. I mean, it's not it's not just, okay, do, does, do they really want it? Like, you know, a lot of times you want something in life, but you don't know how to, how to achieve it. It's like, you know, like how many people do you know – what the hell is going on over there, caller? What are you doing? Hey, man, are you driving. A, oh, okay. Sounds like you're in a boiler room. But yeah, yeah I don't know. Work. So it's like, you know, like, for example, in life, like you might want to have a great relationship with, you know, with, with a, a guy or a girl. And, but a lot, maybe you don't have the tools that you need to be able to, to build up a relationship. Maybe you've never seen a healthy relationship in your life, right? You know, maybe you right. want to, you want to be able to get the skills you need to have for a good job, but you know, you lack all skills and you lack any wisdom to know how to gain any of those skills. The same goes with sobriety, you know? Um, yeah. You know, I, I wish it was as simple as it, you know, the old saying, it takes a habit to replace a habit. And if you just keep busy, you'll find other shit to do. But, you know, finding yeah. the other shit to do doesn't really happen right away. You know, there's a, there's a, right. there's that big period of discomfort. All right, right. No, I definitely, uh, man, I wish him the best of luck. You know, he was, he was, all of you guys were part of, uh, you know, part of my childhood growing up. So, you know, as long as, like I said, everyone's kind of in a good place, that's great. But uh, my, 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 my other question is, had you guys not found fame what kind of day job do you think you'd be doing right now? Uh, I can speak for myself. I, I always, uh, in between, you know, having uh, an opportunity presented to me and then fucking it up, which I did a lot, um, <laughs> I would always go to, to waiting tables. Um, nice. Not okay. saying that I'd be waiting tables now, but something that 
involved me communicating with people. I, I, I had the gift of gab. I liked people that entertained me. I entertained them. So something where I was with the public, you know, I, I couldn't nice. see myself doing like a, uh, uh, a nine to five uh, cubicle office job. I need some form of, of, of interaction with people. You'd be a podcaster. Sure, sure. Right? <laughs> there it is. There yeah. it is. You found your calling. Franz, what do you got? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> it's a funny, it's funny. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've always envied people with no artistic aspirations. Um, sometimes when you have a, a, a an innate desire to achieve and to to, to 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 create, I guess, to create art, and you know, uh, you know, I like to write, and I like, I, I, you know, I, I like to make my films, and I like to produce, and I like to shoot, and all this stuff. But if I often I look at people who don't have the desire to do any of those things and I envy them because it, 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 it frees you up. I, I mean, like if I had the time back from every show that I developed and pitched and from every script that I wrote that I could never get off the ground and for every frustrating idea that I had that, that I, I saw the beauty in and I could never achieve, if I had that time back, I would be 10 fucking years younger. You know, and, like, and you know, Alfred Hitchcock says that, you know, he wasted you know, seven years of his life pitching movies that would never come to fruition. So if I didn't, if I could free myself from all artistic ambitions, I would move to San Francisco or to Albuquerque and I would work at a coffee shop and serve coffee all day. That'd be rad. And just chill out with my friends or, or work at a bar okay. and, uh, and just not even make the fancy drinks, just to, just to be a bar back and just to hang out and just <laughs> sip beer with my friends and just watch movies and shoot the shit and play video games. That sounds like a very pleasurable existence. Hey, man, that sounds fun. I'm stoked the show is back, and I can't wait to listen, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, that, that brings us to uh, definitely past our halfway mark. And, um, you know, I wanted to take this time uh, for you all to learn about uh, the Might Be, Might Be News Network. Taylor, take it away. Well, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we have a ton of shows on the Might Be News Network. Uh, Might Be News, Relatable Radio, Might Be Sports, Might Be Brews, uh, Might Be Tunes. Uh, it's, it, we have all, so much stuff going on. I know a lot of your guys' fans have been uh, really, really uh, anxious for you guys to come back and uh, take a listen to some of the other stuff that we've got going on at the network as well. There's so much. Monday through Friday is, is our goal. There, you know, There's some weeks where we can't hit every day, but we try to have a different show out every day, Monday through Friday. It's pretty awesome. We love it. Oh, we got a visit by our kitty here. Okay, here we go with uh, part two. Hold on one second. All right, we're good. All right. It's not happening. We got our first. All right, here we go. There you go, the intro again. Yeah. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you see? Because it's the perfect taste for me. That original taste, you know. Us peppers are an interesting breed. An original taste is what we need. Ask any pepper and he'll say, Only Dr. Pepper tastes that way. There's carrying peppers, marrying peppers, diet peppers, quiet peppers. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? There's saluting peppers, tooting peppers. I'm a pepper man. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Be a pepper. The Novak and Franz show brought to you by Dr. Pepper. And that was that was the uh, sound of a commercial that was, I think, it was put out, I think, in uh, 1978. And it was starring David Naughton, who went on to play an American werewolf in London. Wow. So if you can imagine no that guy singing. That was his springboard. Transforming into wow. the monster. That was his big break. Yeah, yeah. They had so much character back then. I know. The commercials, advertisements. Things sure have changed, huh? Jingles. Yeah, like this is it's it's so dated, but like they w they played the shit out of this. Like people would go around singing this on the street. Commercials yeah. used to be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to you, I'm just thinking about AIDS now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the you. diet plan. Yeah, 
<laughs> it was so fucking twisted. I couldn't even like. Remember how scared you used to be when you used to give your blood? That's what I thought. That was what I was thinking during that. Actually, maybe I played it for the wrong crowd. You did. I you really did. It, I expected it to have more of an if emotion. If you played like more radio, of a happy emotion. radio bam, I, that would have been like uh, the right time or place. I think. Wait, so you want me to come on this show and play Radio Bam episodes? No, if you would have played that. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know what you meant. No, but so so the story about, <laughs> so but but no, it, so as a junkie, one of the ways to get money would be to donate blood. Well, and why don't you just you. preface this with the title of the chapter? The story goes into Oh, well, well I wasn't that. after that. I was after when, when you used but to that go. that kind of all, I think, connects. Yeah, well, there, okay. well there, is a, there is a chapter in the new book, The Streets of Baltimore, called um, uh, the, the AIDS, AIDS needle, needle I Shot Up With. Which is very true. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, next, maybe uh, next show I'll actually read a chapter. Get people a little excited. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that would be very pertinent. But what was the stress going through your mind giving blood, thinking that you possibly had AIDS, and then they would pay you money to come back, and then you wouldn't accept the money because you didn't want to see the results? I didn't the want the results. So I tried to finagle a deal with the doctor saying, look, just give me the check. It was $23. The check will be for $23. I and, wish. And it's in a blood bank or a hospital? No, it, was a, it wasn't a hospital. So it was like a... a a blood bank of sorts. Okay, so they, they they provided other services. Okay, um, counseling things of that nature. And didn't they recognize you were junkie and not want your blood? No, that's why they wanted it. That's exactly why they wanted it because they were trying. It was like a form of harm reduction years ago. So they wanted. They knew that alcoholics addicts don't stay on top of their health and and, and wealth. Right. So what way? What better way could we get an addict to come in and and let him know what's going on with him than offering him twenty three dollars, right? So you would go and and you would give blood and they would give you a check when you give the blood, but then so when they give you the, the first time they give you the blood, they also uh, the check comes accompanied with with brand new uh, syringes, clean water, uh, clean cookers, little. St- sterile metal caps, clean little cottons that you throw in there that you use to inject it with, and um, clean everything, sterile, clean everything. And so that's a form of harm reduction right there. And then you want the twenty, the other check for the results, so you go back. But I thought their idea was, I thought the whole purpose of them was to get blood for people who need a blood for no, operations no, and no, stuff. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Oh, it was. It this was, was geared directly towards addicts and alcoholics. Oh, so it was a governmental funded program. Absolutely. In order to, um, what do you call that? Uh, 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 cut down on collateral damage. I call of, it harm reduction. Addiction. Yeah. Harm reduction. Wow. Yes. I didn't understand that part. No, of that's, it. that's exactly what it was geared towards. Mm. You know? So then look, like it actually worked, right? Because I never, I, I, during that time when I was caught up in active addiction, the last thing I gave a shit about was knowing what I may or may not have contracted yeah. through my curious oh. ways of, of living. Mm-hmm. So, but I did want $23. Yeah. You know? Um, so I would go and I would do that. And, and, and I remember it was perfect because the check, it was right down the street from a check cashing place, right on Broadway, a block or two up from the 7-Eleven where I called for help that one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you would, a couple of dollars down was where the, the place was, the clinic. And you would get it and they'd cut you the check there for $23. You'd walk up to the Broadway pharmacy, which is on Broadway. Um, and and they would cause, charge like a dollar eighty two or $2 to cash the check. So when you actually got the money, you got $20. It made it worthwhile. You could get two pills of heroin, $10 yeah. a piece. They, so they kind of knew what they were doing. But then when it happened and I, I, I wasn't able to finagle a deal with the doctor saying, just give me the money and not the results, and then they gave them to me regardless of how I asked, I, I knew now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then when the opportunity presented itself, the time came where I was confronted with, okay, if I'm going to get clean, that means that I'm going to have to start caring about my health. And I remember they diagnosed me with hepatitis. Mm-hmm. You know, so... You were giving that guy. Jesus. You were giving that guy some insight on on what it kind of looks like or takes for a person to to begin their journey in recovery. Yeah, you know, it's all little pieces that at the end fit together to build this big, pretty picture. Same deal. That was just a little intricate piece that fit in this big puzzle mm. that you see now, wow. which is a guy 
sitting at the table who doesn't have I just can't imagine the anymore. stress of being convinced that I had HIV and just like the stress of, of sitting there while they take my blood and I'm just like, I should want to see the fucking results of this, but I don't want to know. You know, I can't know. It, 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 it Welcome to addiction. Yeah. I mean, because the, the that moment of clarity when it appears and I, I for whatever period of time, recognize reality for what it is, yeah. what I have created due to my decisions, choosing to follow active addiction, now I'm presented with I might have AIDS. Mm -hmm. So, oh shit, do I address this and go through a really painful, uncomfortable situation? Or do I just get $10 and go shoot up and escape my reality yeah. that I have created? Ignorance is bliss now. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And that's kind of why it's always a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. I've known people who never get an STD test. Sure. And, and they'll lie. To, and, and, and Out there, when people tell you that they're clean uh, when you have sex with them and they tell you they had an STD test, never believe them. Sure. I've met so many fucking people who will just lie to their partner and say they had it just because they don't really want to know. And their logic... Yeah. I, Easy E said this on Howard Stern. Howard Stern said, how do you know... Uh, you know, you don't have AIDS or you don't have some disease. You're sitting there banging all these girls without a condom. He said, because if if I had a disease, then they would have it. Then exactly. I would know. And, he, and, and Howard Stern goes, I love that logic. And, of course, EZ dies of AIDS, yeah. right? So it's, you know. I mean, to, to, to kind of prove that point a little bit more further down the road when I was like, you know, we were filming and in Westchester and running around like a bull in a china shop. Yeah. I, I didn't ever want to get tested, right, for STDs or anything. So I'd have sex with people, and, and then when they would get tested, I'd find out if I was okay. Jesus. By way of their tests. Oh, that's stressful. You know, which is really fucked up. And, that is fucked and up. the reason why I'm being so transparent is because I'm trying to kind of hopefully induce some form of harm reduction for someone in the future that might find yeah. themselves in a precarious situation. Oh. You know? Um, so it's, it's, you're right. Like, I... It, Fuck, if I have my cock rock hard and, and a, a chick's pants are down and I'm getting ready to fuck and she says, are you clean? Odds are, I'm, uh, if I'm not, say, no, I'm not. Looks like I'm not fucking now. Did you say the chick's <laughs> pants are down too? Yeah. There so that's go. how you start having sex? Or you just sit there and pull down your pants and just stand there? Why do you make shit weird? I just, try, so I just got a visualization. <laughs> you make shit weird. All right, let's go to the line. God damn uh. it. Hello, caller. Sorry Hello. you had to hear that. <clears throat> <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Um, Man, I hope this, this is my second 18. time calling in and uh, getting to talk to you guys. Oh, it's been cool. a while, though. Yeah. Um, I was just wanting to know. I don't know if anyone's asked this yet. Um, how's the book coming along, and uh, when's it going to be released? Oh, you got to uh, – we, we, uh, we already did this, so you got to – when the show comes out, you got to rewind it so we don't have to say it twice and bore everybody. But soon. But, it's it's right already on. written. It's coming out soon. Awesome. Because uh, – <laughs> You said my name's going to be in there in the special. Oh yeah, thanks yeah, or yeah. We thank we thanked a lot of 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 fans and people who supported us and and that kind of stuff. You know, I wanted to make sure. Um, um, you know, we got the we got the people who who gave us the strongest support in there. So thank you again. Awesome, thank yeah. you. I can't wait to read it. Cool. You have any, you have any other so questions? You, um, my mind's gone blank just like last time. Right. Um, I did want to ask you if you guys have ever heard of uh, what's called organite. Uh, is that a mineral? Um, it's actually um, epoxy resin with crystals and metals in it. And um, it neutralizes the effects of uh, 5G radiation and negative frequencies such as that. Oh, yeah, because that 5G uh, radiation, the, you know, they always put those towers, the, the 5G stuff, they, they always end up putting it on, like, on a government building. And then they'll find out like 19 kids in the school suddenly have horrible brain cancer. cancer. Yeah. Yes. And then they say, "Well, yeah, they're doing the five G." Uh, well, you know, we're going to what States. we're going to do is uh, we're going to um, uh, Apple is going to have an internal study, and uh, we're going to study to see if we were the cause of the harm. And then, of course, when the study comes out, <laughs> looks like it didn't have anything to do with us. <laughs> it's an incredible coincidence that uh, cancer in this one particular school is nineteen thousand times the rate of uh, other schools next to nuclear reactors. Yeah, uh, this yeah. makes me sick. This actually 
you know chimes in perfectly with what we were talking about the uh, the, uh, oh, the conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> there's a the there's a viral video going around right now of of one of the linemen, the people who put this stuff that install this stuff, and he's talking about the science behind the five G stuff and how it basically can liquefy your cells and it's like super close range as opposed to what we've become used to is kind of like more long range it like sweeps further whereas the yeah. the 5g is more concentrated and he's really worried about which is how radiation sickness yeah. works so yeah. for example if there's like uh if there's a nuclear blast and we get the you know we get the the fallout coming down in the rain that's exactly how radiation poison happen it happens it it uh, decreases your cells' ability to regenerate, right? Which is why uh, radiation actually affects younger people more than it does older people because their cells uh, regenerate at a way faster rate. Mm. Um, you know, so um, so if you look at places like Chernobyl or Three Mile Island and stuff like that, the radiation affects the, the elderly uh, very seldom. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, very crazy stuff. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for your it totally call. breaks your DNA apart. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 how did you get so interested in this? Um, you know, just uh, keeping my eyes open as to what's going on in the world, and um, you know, like uh, the contrail chemtrail thing that's going on, oh, yeah. and that's just another one. You know, yeah. things that are bad yeah. for humanity for the most part, and uh, you know, um, I, you know, I don't know how I exactly got into it. It's been over a period of time though. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they say question everything yes. and that literally means everything. Yes. So don't take everything for face value or what the government tells you, what the media tells you. Um, <laughs> it just keep your eyes open. I like this. Girl. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. We appreciate it. All right. You guys have a good one. Okay. Which is one of my biggest problems. I'm prone to say yes to nine out of 10 things. Yeah. I, I, I I'm a horrible negotiator. Uh, I, I'm, I, I just, I, I'm just a, I, I want to say, I don't know. My, my brother pointed that out about me and my mother. We, we're just prone to say yes. It's fun to learn to be curious. Dude, I, there's nothing worse than trying to talk to, to, to someone about something interesting. Ah, it's just a conspiracy theory. I don't want to talk about that. Right, right. All right, what do you want to talk about? Hockey. <laughs> oh God, dude! You're pouring the shit out of me already, dude. Oh, we got another caller. Uh, go ahead, caller. Hello. Hey, Joe. Hey, Brandon. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, Franz, I got a question for you. Yeah. When you filmed Jackass Two, I know the scene with Vito and the Lamborghini tooth pole got taken out. What actually happened, and what what went through your guys' heads when it came to that scene? Um, well, well, actually, it's by incredible coincidence you're the second person to to call about this. But I will say that um, when we were filming it, I was very stressed because um, I was shooting in slow motion. Now there wasn't the capability to shoot slow motion uh, with the current video cameras that that we had to work on that movie. So we decided to shoot it in. Uh, uh, 16 millimeter film and so that's what i had running through the old bolex and um <laughs> you only have three minutes of film that can run through that camera before you need to reload now when you're doing slow motion it's a minute and a half so right when we right when the shot started we had that had to do it in a fucking minute so they were kind of goofing around and joking around and high-fiving each other. I was like, go, go, go. I start fucking yelling at Knoxville and bam, and they realized they could hear the, the motor running, and they, they jumped in there. So I was just terrified I wouldn't get the shot. I wasn't concerned for Vito. He was, um, he's a man who was used to, to uh, physical adversity. Uh, he, I mean, the motherfucker was the guy who, when he worked in an auto body shop and he did fiberglass work, he wouldn't wear the mask until his lung collapsed. Like he was that dude. Like when he oh, fucking God. broke, he fell on the ice and broke his arm. Did he go to the hospital? No, because he, I mean, he couldn't afford it. Didn't have insurance. So he just took aspirin. He you know? traded a half a hoagie for a blow job once. <laughs> Did he? Uh -huh. <laughs> I always think of that. How do you know that? Phil told us. <laughs> why only why only I know. half There's I think a lot Phil of told questions. us that too There's, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I think There's, he told us that too that's some good bargaining yeah you're like I'm really the caliber of people he surrounded himself yeah. with <laughs> 
<laughs> but just who's like, the yeah? Who's the person that says that's a good deal? Yeah, like I'm so hungry. Well, what should you, I give me a blowjob? I'll give you. Oh, oh yeah, well, I I tell you what, man. Like I'll suck your dick for that hoagie. How about half the hoagie? See, that's like me negotiating for myself. <laughs> that's how I do. I fuck myself man. all the time. Well, uh, well. Anyway, uh, thank you for your call. Food or alcohol? He went for it. Oh wait, what, yeah. what was that? Oh yeah, yeah. I um, said it seemed like if you offered him food or alcohol or money at any extent, he would take it. Yes. No matter how little or how much. Yes. Well, uh, what's your age, caller? <laughs> I, I gotta I'm know. Twenty-four. You're twenty-four. Are you hitting on him, weirdo? <laughs> no, I was wondering because he has he has an interesting uh, oration about him. Um, the the way again, he, are you hitting on him? Yes. Are you single? Guys always make shit Frost, weird, man. Frost, my girlfriend's upstairs right now. Calm down. Yeah, simmer down, Frost. <laughs> you got him all hot and bothered, man. Hey, thanks for calling in, my Where'd friend. Where'd you meet your girlfriend? Uh, now he's jealous. <laughs> we met through mutual friends. Oh, uh, okay. The old-fashioned way. That's the good way to do it. I hate these dating sites, man. These Tinders and all this. I don't understand why people would want to do anything like that. <laughs> sounded so old. These Tinders and all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, he sounded like an old man. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not exactly young. Jesus Christ. I, I don't sparkle of youth. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, thanks again, caller. <laughs> Where do you sparkle. live? No, only kidding. Okay. <laughs> but um, he's not. <laughs> it was funny when we were talking about a hoagie. It, it, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one more caller. Yeah. 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 It's on. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Hello. No, oh, I guess I don't want to talk to us. Hi ho, caller. Well, he's only been on for twelve seconds. You think we can get bored that fast? I know. But it was funny. I was. I remembered a uh, a prank war that I had with Deco when he said about the hoagie. This is good. I don't. I've never told this story before. This is a fucking good one. So Deco had a uh, what was it? Uh, what was that truck that he had? That old truck. Uh, uh, was it a Chevy? Was it the Bronco? Yeah, the Bronco, right? So we had this Bronco, and I realized that the, you know, the, it has those little corner windows, the little triangular ones. Yeah. And the one didn't work. So we would always go to the arcade. They had a, uh, a an arcade in um, St. Pete's that we go to. You know, you play the old video games and pinballs. And he always had quarters. So one time I took like five fucking rolls of quarters, and I replaced it with one penny. And he blamed that on Josh Richards. He saw, remember Josh Richards, yeah. Dix, the production manager dude? He hated him for years because he thought that he ripped him off, right? Okay, so then I realized I could get his goat. Deco hated a lot of people. Yeah, he, he really did, man. Once he, he fucking deci- just, once he decided he, he didn't like somebody, isn't that weird? Jesus Christ. <laughs> he really did, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah, it was bad. And yeah. you're right. Once he made his mind up, there was no changing it. And I think of some of the people he hated that, that, were, that were largely unhateable. Like yeah. some of the people were completely lovable. I don't even. I don't want to mention any names of the people who hate because I don't want to hurt their feelings. But like some of the people, I was like, why do you hate that dude? He's like, I don't know. I just don't like him. It's, it's yeah. weird. Well, I possess so much hate. Yeah. Well, anyway, there's something deeper there. Yeah. That, <laughs> this began to be a lighthearted story so uh, so anyway <laughs> let me diagnose the problem so, here so the speaking of hoagies right so he got fucking angry at me one time so he had it was a uh you don't say it was Dico called got a, angry? i know if you can believe no. that so it was a thanksgiving hoagie so it was a delicious hoagie that he got and it was uh it was hey <laughs> even you bore your cat why is the cat i don't blame you so i wish i could leave she's growling <laughs> okay so so it's um it's a hoagie with uh, uh turkey gravy stuffing and cranberry sauce and so he saw me eating a hoagie. He goes, is that my fucking hoagie i'm like no yours is over there he goes is that is that a thanksgiving hoagie and i'm like yeah i got one too because no you fucking didn't you eat my fucking hoagie I'm like, no, I'm not. Yours is over there in the box. He goes, no, I'm the only one who knew it again. So he made a big deal. I'm like, look. And I go to the box and I get it. I'm like, here, right there, open it up. And he goes, well, I was just mad because I thought, like, I'm like, well, you're still mad. Yeah. I'm not eating your man, but I'm not eating your hoagie. So I'm like, I'm going to get that son of a bitch. So I took, he ate half the hoagie and saved the other half and put it on his fucking car seat. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have fucking made me mad, Deco. So I opened up the little side window opened up unlatched it and took it from him now it was winter i kept it under my fucking car seat in my hatchback for two weeks and two weeks later i put it Jeez. back where i got it oh from. god <laughs> so like two weeks later he just sat there and was like here's here's the fucking hoagie i i looked for this i i thought it was here how could it have been here the whole time so then 
Bam had all these porno magazines at his house. I forget, the hustler, someone was sending him porno mags. So I took all the fucking porno mags. Now, Deco had a lead foot. Right, when you drove with him, man, it was like start, stop, start, stop. Right, right, fucking gunning it all the way. So I put him underneath the, 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 the driver's seat. So when he hit that first break at the end of the road where that first stop sign is, and yeah. he nailed it, all the pornos shot out from under the thing. And he's wondering, how... How did these get here? Did I, did I borrow these? Did Bam give these to me? How long have these been here? So then, Bam had the Tony Hawk Pro Skater game happening, and they sent him a fucking Xbox, a PlayStation, like all these fucking video games and consoles. Wow. Uh, and I fucking stole them all and put them in the back of Vico's <laughs> fucking thing, uh, his, uh, the, the bed of his truck, and I put a blanket over it. And he saw it a week later and came back, and it's like, fuck, like... And he thought Lendon, remember Lendon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he thought that Lendon stole them and fucking tried to make Deco oh, wow. be the getaway car. And he didn't want Lendon to get caught. So he like had to fucking go back to Bam's like late at night and Put sneak the them back. into the house. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I just kept fucking with him and fucking with him. And finally, I told him what I did on an episode of Radio Bam. And uh, he's like, dude. I thought I was going crazy, so we, <laughs> we shook on it, and uh, he, I, that's how I got Deco. That's one of my. That's a good, that's a good uh, one. One of my favorite Deco stories. Well, that's always the thing. Whenever an issue would arise with you, is that I knew that you were very patient and you were very meticulous, and that you would not lose. You know what I mean? So no matter how much I yeah. fucking hated you and wanted to like kill you, <laughs> I'm like I had to be careful because I knew that it was. I think that's largely in part why that invisible chess game always played in my mind when yeah. it came to you. Yeah. You know, because I recognized those 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 traits that you had. I yeah. knew, I I saw that in your makeup. So therefore, I was always very cautious and careful with what and when I did to you. I'll share that with the audience real quick. So it's like you know when the 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 twelve steps of recovery, uh, the ninth step is when you. Um, go to all the people that you feel you've wronged financially or in a relationship and you make amends to them. Mm -hmm. you tell them you're, you apologize and you wonder how to make it right. Make your wrongs right. So yeah. when Brandon came up to me, uh, he, he came to my house one time and we went out in the deck and he sat there and he's like, uh, this is my step and I don't want to make my amends to you. I was like, oh, oh, okay, cool. Like, you don't have to do this. Like, I've, Everything's water under the bridge. We're good friends. You're like my little brother. I love you. You know, it's cool. But okay, like you need to do this. So I'll listen. And you started telling me how you knew that life was this mental chess game between us and like how I was always two steps ahead. And you always felt you had to like take beast two steps ahead of me. And you're like, you know how we have that thing going on? Like, I just want to squash that. I'm like, I'm like. Brandon, we don't have that going yeah. on. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're the only one who thinks that. Like, is that what you thought all these years? Like that? that yeah, must have been I really. To... It was mentally draining, <laughs> and, and you know, and it was all just to cover up my addiction, right? Because I didn't want that exposed, and I knew that y y your words hold weight, right? You're a credible fella, and, and you're you're a stand up guy, if you will. Try so, to be. so when when you say things to people, they listen. Much more than they would listen to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely held more weight than mine. So when Franz says, Novak did this, he did this, he's this, he's that, I'm fucked. Yeah, so yeah. I always had to, despite what I was up to, present things in a certain Dance manner. Around and play the good guy. And, yeah, and, and hope that they all aligned mm -hmm. whenever they were exposed. And I, but the unfortunate thing is you didn't know you were in this game of chess with me. I know, it's so weird. <laughs> so I was just going insane. Yeah. Well, well I guess... I could, it makes well, me think of something real yeah. quick that uh, was going around. People were talking about whether or not people had internal monologues. Yeah. Have you Fuck have yeah. you heard about this stuff going around? Like, no. I guess some people didn't realize that that not everybody does that. Or if you know if you don't have an internal monologue, that you didn't even realize that other people are walking around literally narrating their own lives. To themselves. Now, do you guys have internal monologues going on? All the time. I even talk to myself. Yeah. Like, if I'm alone, yeah. I'll narrate what I'm doing to myself. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm like, okay, now I get to get the thing. Oh, God damn it. I, I forgot right. to make the call. I'm an idiot. When I talk to him, I'm going to be like, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> like you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I have... um, past, um the past just being in the shower, though. Like, a lot of people yeah, just yeah. do that kind of shit in the shower. Mm -hmm. But, like, 
I am one of those people who do it all day long. Mm -hmm. All day now, long. Now, do you rehearse what you're going to say to people if you... Um, like certain situations, yeah. Like if I am going to go talk to my boss about something work-related, I need to make sure that I have my shit together. Um, if I'm getting ready to do a podcast and host a podcast, I need to make sure that I have my shit together. It's like Shakespeare wrote, uh, what's the saying about how the world is a stage, yet we are all actors, right? <laughs> right, right. So it's like we're all playing playing a part. Novak, you know? do you have an internal monologue? I do. But to, to dive in a little bit to what you just referenced, you know, the world's a play, and we all play a part. And, and in this program of mine that I work in, uh, it talks about uh, if only – Franz would play the role that I assigned him. The show would go off without a hitch. If only uh, the lighting director shined it here, the audience would be pleased. Uh, only for me to walk away never happy, yeah. right? Because no one expectations are nothing but unfulfilled resentments. So the moment you don't do as I think you should do, say as I think you should say, or feel as I think you should feel, I'm immediately fucking furious. So the sooner that I could come to grips with. The fact of the matter is all that I can control is me, my thinking, my attitude, my behavior, and I stop believing that I can dictate the outcome of what you choose to do or not do, the easier my life becomes because now there's no expectations. This is what it is. Um, but absolutely, I fucking talk to myself all the time, and the cool thing now is is after working the 12 steps of the 12-step program that I belong to, I, I now have this heightened sense of awareness because I used to talk to myself so much I'd create this narrative to where I'd talk myself into a really fucked up situation. Whether it was real or fancied, who knows. But now I, I can talk myself off the ledge really quick because I have that awareness to say, okay, these are the facts. I'm right here right now doing this with you. What's going to happen 10 minutes from now or, or yesterday, it does not matter because I cannot control or dictate the outcome of it. It is it's, so it's all freeing bigger, when you do that, yeah. man. Like, like you are freed yeah. from, from the biggest burden. Easier said than done. But. Yeah. yeah. Well, those expectations that the, we have on other people is literally a – prison that you constructed with your own yeah, hands self-induced you know and, and you you built a prison around yourself and it's like you look at these control freaks who are like always angry that no one's acting the right way no one's acting like they should Deco. no one's right. doing this deco your yeah. father yeah you my know dad. like like you know i used to be like that when i was when i was in my, my very early 20s i was like that i was very impatient mm -hmm. and i was like yeah. oh they're, they're, no one's acting like they should and it, and it's like once I freed myself of that of that uh, that internal script that, yeah. that no one else is following but me, God, it felt like like all life's burdens. Because in the end, what do we really control? Going back <laughs> to the fucking dinosaur bone, it's like the, the yeah. dinosaur analogy. Full circle. It's here. like, I what, like this. what did, even the Tyrannosaurus Rex yeah. eating the 220 pounds of meat, no one else could kill him. But like at the end, we're all fucking bones in the ground. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah. in the end, what do you really control? Absolutely. So it's um, and it all comes back to acceptance is the answer to everything. Yeah. It really is. Uh, a, a project we have going on right now. Things were great, and then we got a little speed bump today. And and immediately I'm on a plane. My phone shut down. I can't call. I can't text. I have three hours to think about this. Now my brain, the one that's so fucked up that puts me in a lot of positions I don't want to be in and makes me feel a lot of things I don't like to feel. Yeah. Um, will start talking all this shit to me. Right? Fancy, not real. It's, it's make, I'm making this up from this fucked up brain of mine. Um, so what I have to do is I have to ground myself and I say the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Then I back it up with like simple things that people have told me along the way. Like uh, rejection is God's protection. Ultimately, just saying that there's such a bigger picture at play and I cannot control the outcome of it. And whatever is supposed to be is exactly how it's supposed to be. It might not make sense to me now, but it will. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's just the it's just a, a a less of a burden. It's awesome. I love it. You know. Well, um, well, hey, uh, we're we're already gone over. It, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And um, we don't have a Patreon. We're not asking for donations. But um, if you, what I, I always, you know, if people always ask, oh, how can I donate? Don't donate. But if you want to get cool stuff, sure, cool autograph stuff. Um, here we have a uh, Dream Seller, and uh, all these come. Um, why isn't this one of C-U-M. Oh, this is a misprint. This is one of the misprints. But believe me, <laughs> if you get one of these on BrandonNovak.com or Amazon, they will, uh, well, the Amazon one will be autographed. Go to BrandonNovak.com for the autograph. 
This is the Brandon Novak Chronicles, our the world's first addiction graphic novel. Never been done before. Really proud of that. Yeah, and the, um, the stories the of Don Vito. It's probably, it's probably yeah. not a sign. Oh, one this either. is a sign either. But these will come signed <laughs> on BrandonNovak.com or Amazon. And what's really cool is the featured story uh, is a CKY story. Um, He's showing it to YouTube for the podcast. Yeah, I'm sure the anyway, stories that have not been told. Anyway, there's a 40-page story about uh, uh, the CKY crew and uh, one of Novak's uh, incredible, horrible drug uh, You're giving him too much information. Okay, right, too Just much, check sorry. it out. Check it out, and uh, thank you so much, and we love you. And hey, if you have a, a problem and you need a little assistance with getting yourself out of the position you may find yourself in, call me directly, 610-635-9092. Me or my team will do whatever we can to get you the help that you need. MBN Network. Go there. MBNnetwork.com. We have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Go there. Subscribe. Get on the wildcard game show. Get exclusive Novak and Fran stuff and everything else. Go there. We'll see you guys next time.